everybody welcome back to my channel today we're going to make a diy dollar tree farmhouse birch lane inspired basket organizer if you notice here this basket organizer um, that inspiration piece the baskets are a tiny bit bigger than the dollar tree baskets but it was 84 dollars on clearance nevertheless so the first thing you need is three of these wire baskets these are the rectangle ones in black you're going to need a piece of foam board and you're going to need some of this antique birch contact paper from the Dollar Tree, a ruler with a metal or a metal straight edge, because um, we're mostly going to cut, <laughs> and then my cutting mat, um, and of course an X-Acto knife of some sorts. And then I used these chalkboard ladles that I got at Walmart, or you could use these from the Dollar Tree. And what I decided to do was um, to show you guys that if you're going to use some stickers from the Dollar Tree, just make a piece of the covered contact paper foam board the size of the label and this way it gives you a little thickness and dimension and then these clothes pins from the Dollar Tree also um, these are the mini ones they're in the craft section and you're going to glue them to the back of the chalkboard labels to hang on the baskets okay so the first thing we're going to do and we've done this before if you've been around for a while we are going to cut a piece of foam board and we're going to cover it with the wood grain contact paper and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to make it look like that piece of board that goes across the top and the measurements for this are six inches wide by the length of the board which is about 29 30 inches um, you just want to make sure you have enough room for the three baskets all right and then you're just going to use your straight edge and your knife and you're going to cut um, it is a lot cleaner if you cut, um, if you guys have ever done sheetrock, you cut through the first piece of paper, you snap it, then you cut through the back of the paper. This way you get lots of clean, um, more clean edges. And I'm just making sure that I have enough contact paper. And this is just one trick if you need a long piece to be all cut, is that I'm cutting the entire roll thickness through. So. I know it's just weird I should have just got a big heavy suit duty scissor and cut the thing it's just one of these shortcuts that you use you know um, so then we're gonna wrap it and unlike um, the country crate pro project this is only one layer of foam board because this isn't gonna need anything it's just decorative basically it's not gonna be supporting anything okay so um, I'm going to insert that video at the end in the description box if you want to check that out. And it gives you a little bit more detailed um, explanation of how to cover, um, work with the contact paper and cover the foam board. Um, but what you want to do is you just want to line it up so it's centered between the top and the bottom. And make sure you crease your edges and press down wherever you can. And then you can peel as you go. You cut the corners. You can wrap the corners. Um, there's all different ways. But this is the way we like to do it, right? <laughs> um, so you just flip it over. This is the side that's going to be the good side. So we're working on all the bubbles and the kinks. And there was some um, bends in the foam board. But, you know, um, that old look that you get in your wood, you know, makes it a little bit more farmhouse. It makes it look a little bit more like used wood, which isn't so terrible. So I'm just doing the same thing again where I'm cutting the edges, cutting the corners so that I can wrap the corners. Um, then I'm pulling the paper back and folding that first edge in. Let's see. That first corner. There you go. All right. And then I'm going to cut the length of the um, entire back piece. Oh, this was just me trimming up some of the little foam board. Okay. And I'm going to wrap up the top side down. And then the bottom side up. And then I'm going to lay the piece over and cut the excess. So here we go. Now I'm doing the other side. Again, if you try to get that crease it will give it a little bit more of a, of a, like a wood appearance, you know, as opposed to just rolling it around. 
And I'm going to do the same thing with the back. I'm going to lay the back on and then I'm going to go ahead and cut all the excess off. Which is just an another easy way of doing it if, you know, it's not a two-sided item. We're just putting the contacts on the back just to make it look more, you know, if it comes down, to make it look like wood. Okay, smooth out the bubbles and we're just cutting along this back edge. And then turn it around, do the same on the other side. Okay, and there you have it. So, um, trimming up whatever little pieces got left out. Sometimes my scissor doesn't cut close enough. Um, and then what we're going to do is the same technique we've done in the past. Um, here's a close-up look. And what I've done is I've taken a mechanical pencil and I've pushed the lead in. And wherever there's grain in the wood, I just push into the contact paper, which pushes into the foam board and creates graining. Okay, just to give it that real wood look. So now I'm going to take the three bags, baskets, not bags, and we're going to take the handles off and the labels. And then what we're going to do is we're going to line them up on the board to figure out where we need to put our numbers. Um, so I've just lined them evenly. I try to put the center one in the center and then evenly space the left and the right. Okay, and then just eyeball. Um, you could measure these. You could actually measure the baskets and measure the wood and figure out the math and everything. But... I think that part of the farmhouse look is it looks homemade and handmade and that is what this is all about. So what I've done is I've kind of guesstimated where the letters, are, the numbers are going to go and I'm going to hand write these, but you guys could print them off a computer um, and, and etch them in. You could use a stencil that they sell at the Dollar Tree, but I'm just um, using a straight edge on the bottom so that the letters, the numbers are all lined up. And then I'm using my spacing that I did with the baskets to try to figure out um, where each letter number would go. I know I keep calling them letters. It's so weird. What I did there for a second was I actually lined the tops up too. Okay. And you guys can actually see better in the camera. You can see the numbers show up with the pencil. And it was a little easier for you in the camera than it was for me at the table. Um, but I'm just pressing in ever so slightly. And you'll see that in a second. I'm going to zoom in so you guys can see. And then, um, and then we're going to go ahead and paint it. This is just white acrylic craft paint um, that I had. You can use a white paint pen if you need. You can get white letter stickers. I mean, number stickers, jeepers. Why letters? <laughs> um, you can get white number stickers if you want to go that route as well. Okay, so I'm basically just filling it with acrylic paint. You guys know if you see my whitewashed um signage farmhouse signage then you see that the acrylic paint really does hold really nicely to the vinyl of the contact paper all right and i'm just filling in the one and now the two and i picked this font um tried to just get one that was pretty similar to the sample you know sometimes i'm just you know i, I see need creative inspiration i could see just a cheap way to do it so um that's what I like to do for you guys to show you just the less ex less expensive ways. Um, there is some of this stuff that I have at my house already, but if you're going to go buy it, you know, um, one of the things is these command quick release hooks that we're going to use. Um, you can get a package of 14 of them for $7 and change. You can also get them individually at the Dollar Tree, but since we needed six, I went ahead for the big package so um, that I can, you know, have enough and it'll be cheaper. So if you saw there, that was the three etched into the wood, or the wood, quote unquote wood, and now I'm just filling it in. Um, and it doesn't have to be neat because that's part of the weathered farmhouse look. Not that it doesn't have to be neat, but it doesn't have to be solidly filled in because it's supposed to look aged and as, as you know, painted wood ages, it fades away. So this is the um, hooks that I was talking about. I'm going to line the baskets back up again. And I'm going to figure out where I want the hooks to lay. So I wanted to make sure that the hooks landed evenly to the left and the right of the basket. And also in a top hole. Um, basically, if you look at the way the baskets are, there are these holes that sit right along the edge. And I want to make sure that they were even. So what I did was I counted four holes from each corner inwards 
and that's where I put the mark on the board. I just put it right on the edge of the board so that you wouldn't see it, um, and then um, stacked them away, and then I went ahead and I placed the hooks exactly where the markings were. And the hooks are actually gonna stick behind the board. Um, so you actually are not gonna see the white part. You're just gonna see the little silver hook come out from underneath it. And if you guys have never used command strips, strips, yeah, command hooks before, they're really kind of awesome. So what I'm showing you here is that there's different ways to do it. So you can either put the command hook on backwards as I'm showing you here where it's actually stuck to the back of the board um, but then we're going to use a command hook later to stick it to the wall or you can just use your command hooks regularly and line them up so if you're actually command hooking it to the wall but we're going to hot glue it to the board um, that's what we're going to end up using mostly and these command hooks if you guys haven't seen them they're white plastic with a metal loop and um, they're small and each one of these holds five pounds um, so this is plenty strong it's going to have two hooks per basket so each basket will be able to hold 10 pounds um, so I'm just going to do is I'm just going to get the rest of them ready and command hooks have the the sticker the command hook sticker itself has a side that sticks to the plastic and a side that sticks to the wall so now I'm just going to take my hot glue and I'm going to glue it to, glue the other strips to, oh, start over. I'm going to glue the other hooks to their appropriate spots. And um, I've just used a big dollop of glue to glue the, where the silver hook meets the white plastic to the underside of the board. Okay. And this is how the board sticks to the command hooks and the command hooks will stick to the wall. It is repositionable. If you want something more permanent, you obviously could go ahead and do that. But here I am, I've just peeled all the stickers off the back and I've stuck it to the wall. And now I'm lining all the baskets up. It's just that simple. Um, and then I'm sticking the chalkboards on, but wait, I want them a little lower, yep. And now I'm gonna fill them. Um, I've decided to fill this one with the non-refrigerated foods. So there's limes in one side, the onions in the middle, and tomatoes on the right. Um, we're gonna have fajitas. No, we're not, I'm just kidding. But that's what it reminded me of. And then you go ahead and use a liquid chalk marker or chalk pen or chalk itself. And you write on what's there. You could also use this as a sample, was using it for organizing your kids' stuff to come and go. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. Don't forget to like this video, click subscribe, and ring that little notification bell. And every time I upload a video, it'll be in your inbox. And um, as always, you take care, God bless, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.